This week we find free camping in the Kaibab National Forest. We meet a fellow van lifer who needs assistance and we visit the grandest canyon of them all. What's the first mission? Uh, I saw somebody with an ice cream cone. So. <laughs> okay, first of all, we have to document how close Dave is sitting to the edge. <laughs> we are Dave, Karen, and Rudel. In 2018, we set out to explore one adventure at a time. Join us as we continue our journey to find the best free camping. This is great. I love it. Last week, we explored the Mugion Rim. This week, we drive 200 miles north to the Kaibab National Forest, just outside the east entrance of the Grand Canyon National Park. Happening in right now. A uh, guy waved us down, his battery's dead, he can't get it started, so we're gonna try our little portable unit here, see if we can get his motor cranked over. He's up a hill, so we're gonna walk up there first and try this. And if that doesn't work, we'll break out the, the big jumper cables. Okay. <laughs> well, did it work? No go. His battery's no. too dead? His battery's too dead. This didn't even turn it over, so we're gonna see if we can drive up the hill to him. The road is rough. He's got it, no problem. Stormtrooper is a champ. Push in the van, push in the van. That's probably good. Thank you guys so much. You're welcome. What was the conclusion, Dave? None of his dash lights even came on, even after having, I think his battery's good. It must be a, maybe a fuse or a connection or something. We looked and we checked a few fuses. Um, he said for us just to go on that he had plenty of food and water. He had good internet service. So we just exchanged numbers with him if he has any problems. Told him that we're gonna be in the area and we'd mm -hmm. be happy to give him a ride into town if he can't figure it out. And just to let us know if he does get it started or he can't. And he said he has extra fuses with him. Yep. So we're going to keep going. All right, going back the way we came. Going back the way we came. It's just getting worse and worse. The road's getting really rough. We don't want a flat tire. Or we don't want to go 12 miles at five miles per hour. Yeah. We just did that on the rim trail. <laughs> yes, we did. And there was plenty of camping back at the beginning, so. There was. And we could go in and check the uh, Grand Canyon National Park. Uh huh. Is that what you want to do? Yes. Okay, are you trying to sneak me into the Grand Canyon National Park again? Uh huh. After last time. Yeah, but this side, this time will be better.
Well, the road starts off a little rough and then it smooths out. And there's at least a half a dozen places to camp that look really nice. Yeah. Oh, this turns into a big loop. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of camp spots up there. There might be a road right here going to. It just keeps going. Yeah. That's good. I think I don't, can we make that? Oh, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. No. Look at the tree. No. We cannot make that. There's a kayak up there. We won't hit it. We made it. We didn't hit it. Now where? You're going this way? Yeah. Oh. This is even crazy for us. Better watch out for that branch. Yeah. Tree. Uh oh. You're gonna have to help with the antenna. Hmm. <laughs> Today we are in Arizona, five miles outside of the eastern entrance to the Grand Canyon National Park. So we took Highway 64 to get here and then got off on Fire Road 682 and we're about a mile up that fire road. And this is National Forest with a 14 day stay limit, a real, the, like the perfect area to camp and visit the National Park. This is the month of May which I think is probably the best month to be in this area because the snow is all melted because of the high elevation that's something you got to consider and then it's not too hot yet and there's not a lot of people out here there's very few people camping in this area right now and i'm thinking over the summer this gets quite crowded but we got a pretty good setup here i got my hammock set up my chair nice little shaded area Somebody has already raked it, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> pretty clean looking here. Yeah, yep. I don't want it. See if Carrie wants your ball. Does Carrie want your ball? See if Carrie wants it. Oh. How mean. Where's your ball? He won't give it to me. He won't give me his ball. Anytime we find a place to camp, I like just to take a little walk around and see if there's any hazards or anything I don't like about the area and keep an eye out for a better place to camp just in case there's a better one out there. But I'm gonna show you what I found in this one. Initially, this looked like a pretty good place to camp. It's about two or 300 yards away from where we're camping now, but this is what I found. So starting off with, this is an old fire pit. It's full of glass. So that's all the way around. I mean, I could pick all that up, probably take me a couple hours, but I don't want Rudel walking through that. And what's most concerning is this is an elk hide right here. So I wouldn't want Rudel messing around with that. And I just don't, I don't know. I just wouldn't want to be camped next to it. So that tells me that this area is a hunting campground which i'm guessing it probably fills up in september maybe late september but that is the time of year i would not want to be out here and a pile of bones so i'm guessing this is packed full of hunters another thing that draws my attention is the amount of trees that are cut down and limbs that are all over the place so that tells me that there's people coming up to get their winter supply of firewood up here so, and usually I think that's done in fall, right before the snow falls. 
And usually if the Forest Service comes in and cuts down trees, they'll pile up all the branches in a nice neat pile called a slash pile and then they'll burn those when the weather's just right. Like your morning walks, yeah, yeah. I do your business and then you go back and sleep, huh? The life of a rudel. You're a good boy. Okay, let's go. Keep going. Rudel and I are doing our morning walk routine. Rudel takes his walk and then he jumps back in my spot in bed. Today, wow. Look at all this firewood. Too bad. We can't burn any of it. We're in a high fire danger area. No fires in our future. But I was saying we're doing our morning walk routine. We go back, Rudel jumps in my spot. Today I have a lot of editing to do. We have our patron meetup all of next week. And then we're gonna be at the north rim of the Grand Canyon for probably a week after that. I have no idea if we're gonna have service. So I need to get editing two, if I can muster it up, three videos. So that's pretty much three full days of editing. But then uh, I get to play. So not a bad trade-off, huh? It's just buckling down, getting it done. What's the first mission? Uh, I saw somebody with an ice cream cone. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the first mission. <laughs> they could have had a freezer in the back of their rig though. Oh man, they could be selling those. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I think I see where we get ice cream, Dave. The trading post. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. We're starting off good. Yum. Which one's mine? The mint. Mint and strawberry? Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. What'd you get? I got peanut butter cup and pecan. Mmm. Look at the view. Oh, wow. I usually don't like man-made structures and this one was built in 1987, but I think it's amazing. The real rough rock at the base. And then they made it look old by putting different cracks and stuff in between the rock layers in some locations. They just did a really good job. I mean, look how gnarly this is. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. 
Now this part's here is closed, otherwise I'd definitely like to hike up and see what the view is from the top. Let's go inside and take a look. Oh wow. So it's a gift store with the view. You just can't get away from the cliff edges this year. It's a great view, but I'm really tired of all the cliffside activity. <laughs> we need a break. I think we need some water instead, maybe a river or ocean or something. <laughs> no, it's beautiful up here. Okay, first of all, we have to document how close Dave is sitting to the edge. <laughs> it's as close as I get. There's something really special about this yeah, spot. So you. This location here is where the birds cross the Grand Canyon. It's only eight miles across. It's one of the narrower spots because the average crossing length of the Grand Canyon is 10 miles. So you, on certain days, or if you time it right, you should see uh, quite a few different birds making their way across the Grand Canyon. That's pretty cool. This is pretty cool. So one thing, one big advantage of having your house with you at all times is we're hanging out right now, waiting for the sunset on the edge of the Grand Canyon while Carrie's making dinner. In fact, if we open these doors, which we'll do at sunset, we are looking directly at the Grand Canyon. Tonight's dinner is super easy. I have one pound of ground beef, one medium onion dice. This is all browned up. So we're making a one pot Mexican dish. So now I'm just gonna put diced tomatoes. I have two cans of diced tomatoes. A can of corn. A can of green chilies. If you like it hot, you could do jalapenos. This recipe is so easy. You can modify it to what you like. You could put beans in here. I have some leftover kale that must go, so it's going to go in there too. And then we're going to put our pasta, a dry pasta, right into this. Oh no. Let's feed an army. I'm going to put at least three cups of water in here. And I'm going to make it four because that's a lot of pasta. And two packages of taco seasoning. Just because I put that whole packet of pasta in there. We're going to mix this all up. When the pasta is done, we'll mix, um, we'll put some sour cream on top, a little bit of green onion, maybe some guacamole and some cheese. So this is just gonna simmer in this pot until that spaghetti is done, or those noodles. And that is our one pot dish, super easy. So I apologize for the noise, but this is the happening spot. That couple just got engaged and another couple is getting married here tonight. So to finish off our Mexican one pot dish, I did put a brick of cream cheese in. We're gonna dish it up now. Cause I gotta get outside, the sunset is happening. There we go. A Little bit of cheddar cheese, some green onions. 
and dinner is served. Right. It's Thank hot. you. Here, okay. Trade you. Ow. <laughs> it's hot. I probably just should let it cool off a little bit. Mmm. I'm starving. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'm going to eat my dinner. I'm going to scarf it down and go out and find a good spot to get some photos. I hope. This is our second visit to the Grand Canyon and I'm sure glad we came back because this location here is the best spot on the entire Grand Canyon. So far that we've seen. So far that we've <laughs> seen. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm really happy with it. I agree. This was pretty. And we are just barely, what, two miles inside the east entrance? Yeah, so I think we're seven miles from our camp spot. Yeah, so we didn't even explore very much. We stopped here. We knew the views were awesome. We had dinner. That's all we needed to do. Yeah. <laughs> it was perfect. Mm -hmm. I had a great time. So glad we came in. Yep, me too. You can hear us because the wind is ferocious. Yeah, it's not giving up. <laughs> so we're just gonna try to get this information out and get it done. Okay, so what's your favorite part about this location? How close we are to the eastern entrance of the national park. So uh, we're only five miles away. And the area that we're camping at is, there's nobody out here. It's super quiet and relaxing. It's just the, the perfect spot to camp while you go in and check out the park. Yeah, it is early in the season. I have a feeling it gets very busy here. I do too. <laughs> but I also like that there's lots of roads that you can walk on. I like that too. Lots of, tr like just anywhere you go, there's a road you can walk on. So it's very nice to take morning walks. Yep. And of course, the east entrance of the Grand Canyon so far is our favorite with the best view. Yeah, so far, absolutely. <laughs> All right, what you need to know. First, if you are gonna camp here, uh, there is a place for larger rigs, big pole trailers and class A's right at the start, right when you get off uh, the highway and you'll see it, it's right there. But if it's taken, you'll need a backup plan because that's the only location that we have found for big rigs. And then once you get back about a half mile, you'll see a lot more places to camp on the side roads if you start exploring those. But they're pretty much small rigs or, uh, vehicles that have decent amount of clearance. Yeah. If you go back about a mile, like you you saw when we helped that gentleman with his dead battery, it starts getting pretty rough back there. Even we turned around. Yeah. <laughs> and this is Fire Road 682, if you're looking for it. And I would say there's a couple dozen places to camp along this road. Yeah. The nearest gas station is in the National Park at five miles. And the next one? Would be Cameron or Cameron. And it is, 
that is about 26 miles away. And that's on Highway 89, right? Yeah, that's right on Highway oh, yeah. 89. So when you come into this area, you'll need to be fully stocked up on supplies and fuel. Absolutely. Uh, or you can just go into the national park and get an ice cream. You could just, you could just eat <laughs> ice cream. There is plenty of wood here for campfires. Unfortunately, the entire state of Arizona is in a fire restriction. Not that we would burn a fire anyway because it's been so windy, but that is an option yep. maybe in the fall. I would not camp here in the month of September during hunting season. This looks like it uh, gets a lot of use from hunters. Also, there could be people out here collecting their winter's firewood. So that means you'll be hearing a lot of chainsaws. I'd pretty much just skip the whole month of September and probably from there on out uh, as the months get colder, there could be snow up here. Yeah, this would be an absolute perfect destination if you started at the south rim of the Grand Canyon drove all the way across the rim and chose this as a destination before you continued on. Yeah, you don't want to come into this area dur at night though. You want good visibility so you don't smash into any of those rocks on the road. Absolutely. All right, uh, dog friendly. We are getting two bars of Verizon LTE. We're getting two bars of 5G T-Mobile. It has been so windy that I got three videos edited because we're stuck inside. Yeah. Yep. While we were here, the temperatures were in the 80s, which seems perfect. But when you can't open any of the windows in the van, it got pretty hot. Yeah. And now there's a cold front moving through. So that's why I've got the hat on. And the reason why we couldn't open the windows is anytime we opened it, a big cloud of dust would come through. So yeah. we're happy to move on and maybe the wind will settle down. Yep. But this is an awesome place to camp. I hope you get to check it out. I do too. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next week. If you would like to support our channel, please consider becoming a patron or check out our new merchandise at oneadvancereatatime.com. We also have stickers available in our website store. Thank you for watching.